Hey guys, me and team here, and uh, you might be wondering, hey, me and team, why are you showing us a screenshot of your own channel? Well, um, it's in response to a couple questions I'm getting, as well as a recent event. Um, first question here is, um, are you ever going to do more StarCraft 2? And the answer to that is yes. Um, the only issue right now is that uh, with Heroes of Might and Magic 3 and Civ 4 and a certain other project or two projects, spoilers, um, I, I I just haven't done the recordings for StarCraft 2. I don't play it as uh, competitively as I used to, but I do do some 3-on-3 three -three stuff. Uh, with Mackie and MLS on a semi-regular basis, so I can bring you guys that material. So, no, StarCraft 2 is not dead. I will not be posting stuff along the lines of, say, Psy StarCraft or Husky StarCraft uh, any longer. However, I will do my analysis of the games that we play in 3 vs. 3, and it will be more casual, so you're going to see a lot of rookie errors, and uh, those will not uh, necessarily disclude me. I'll be making some rookie errors myself as well. Um, anyway, the next question, or it's more of an ultimatum, actually, here, is, uh, if you're not your, as in, like, I'm possessing, never mind, if you're not going to put some Civ 5 videos up, I'm going to unsub. Well, that's fine, but, uh, yeah, someone did ask me if I was going to do any analysis of the new patch, or anything along those lines, and I said that to that person that I would be either doing another Let's Play of Civ 5, or at least giving my impressions of the most recent patch in the uh, in the Civ 5 patch series. So, I'm going to do the uh, patch route with the uh, now March patch notes. And I'll just take you guys through it, and it shouldn't be anywhere near as long as my normal videos anyway. And give my impressions of it, and uh, things I like, things I don't like. And just a general feel for, you know, why I'm not continuing with this game for the moment. Alright, um, first of all, we start off with Engine. Significant turn time improvements. Invisible Rivers now display correctly. That's nice, um, if it actually happens. The biggest one is, I have not actually seen evidence of this from other people playing the game. And I'm in regular contact with quite a few people who play Civ 5 on a regular basis who have actually suggested that turn times are longer. I'll check that out myself, but, um, and maybe mention it in the comments or, you know, leave a comment on my channel as to whether or not turn times are actually improved. But for now, this is a question mark. User interface. When I first saw this, my eyes lit up. I'm like, oh god, maybe they made it a game. But nope, nope, we didn't get any interface actual fixes. We just got a couple things. Combat summary, when a unit bombards, a city bombards a unit, excuse me. New diplomacy status, denouncing, that displays the turn, that the eye is denouncing the player. Embarked units no longer look like they have 500 strength, that's interesting. And, um, user warned if about to declare war on a city-state that it's under the protection of a major power. My issue with this is that their user interface is lacking at the fundamental level. And they just released a new civilization, Polynesia. Um, Polynesia is interesting and perhaps not balanced against the rest of the civs, but uh, Polynesia is interesting and it has a lot of good going for it. The problem is they, they don't have a working title yet and they're adding DLC, which really goes against my fundamental beliefs in terms of how a game should be developed. And certainly I cannot call Civ 5 a good game until they fix their flaws. Anyway, um, I, they're going to check on how you like doing some things in older civilizations versus Civ 5 and found that a lot of actions take two to four times the amount of keyboard or mouse inputs to accomplish the exact same task. This coming in a game that has supposedly been uh, streamlined. Yes, yes, they claimed it was streamlined. And what that really means is that when you open up a city screen, you can't actually add things to the queue without getting the unit selection stuff out of your face. So, lots of frustration there. Um, not sure if they fixed the ranged attack equals not ranged attack uh, interface glitch. They certainly have not said so in any patch notes, which is discouraging. So units are still doing things that are not uh, ordered. For example, uh, you'll have a unit ordered for moves on a previous turn at the start of the following turn. 
it'll execute those moves even if you try to interrupt them and that is a problem in both Civ 4 and Civ 5 you guys have seen it in my Civ 4 videos it's still there in Civ 5 so that's another user interface thing that's been around for more than five years that's gone untouched and uh, you can't like use any hotkeys for adding cues you can't shift click you can't control click you can't alt click a lot of things that are present in terms of being streamlined for user interface inputs are simply missing and what does the patch note say about this? Nothing! Okay. Well, uh, gameplay, taper off, benefit of excess food when building settlers. Uh, this isn't a big deal, and this might even be necessary. My only problem with it is it continues along a long-standing Fraxis pattern of simply trying to nerf whatever the top players are doing as opposed to fixing their game. I can give all kinds of examples of this, ranging from, you know, nerfing ICS in Civ 5, which was needed, to uh, nerfing wall whip overflow in Civ 4 when the controls don't work. Yeah, that, that wasn't needed. And we didn't need four times the Barbarian Galley spawns before the Apostolic Palace was reworked either. You know, that's just an example. Anyway, a uh, good change here. City-states now recognize when a road is connected for their road connection quest. Uh, always good. That's, uh... Good to get the mechanics working properly. I like seeing that. Um, Golden Ages now provide plus 20% production per city rather than plus one hammer per tile. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure if that ultimately adds hammers or removes hammers. But I think it depends on your empire. Well, certainly it depends on your empire setup. You may or may not get more or less production from that. So I don't really have any arguments with that. Kind of strange, but whatever. Prevent AI from building too many anti-air units, that's good. Don't allow city-states to build Manhattan Project, that's fine. Uh, this is all strategic AI stuff. AI calculations of enemy military might. Uh, are tweaked based on size of enemy and gold reserve. Um, I don't really know what goes on under the hood specifically in Civ 5. Some of that stuff should not be hidden from the player. Some of it, I don't know, some of it doesn't necessarily need to be told to the player. And AI calculation of enemy power and now takes into account promotions. That's interesting because it is the first Civ game that has done that, and that's a step in the right direction. So, uh, good job on the strategic AI. It has a long way to go, but hey, <laughs> progress doesn't come instantly. No calls with strategic AI, but unfortunately, the strategic AI is not why this game is so bad. Um, diplomatic AI, yeah, cascades of denunciations, that was a common complaint, it's good they worked over that. Denunciations now are not permanent, that's very good. Big step in the right direction. And same things with declarations of friendship. The problem with declarations of friendship and denunciations is that if you want to do good diplomacy, you have a strong incentive to avoid either. Uh, just refuse declarations of friendship, refuse, uh, don't denounce anybody, and refuse to go to war. And that seems to be the optimal course for not getting the AI to declare on you, which... Anyway, the, the Diplo is heading in the right direction. There's some modding stuff here. Unfortunately, I don't know a lot about modding. Uh, I, and I haven't played a lot of mods, so I'm not really qualified to talk about modding in general. And, you know, I don't even feel like I'm qualified, so you guys probably know that I am not as well. Multiplayer. Can now use DLC civilizations in multiplayer. <laughs> lies because you can't play multiplayer this is one of my biggest gripes in civ 5 is everything in multiplayer is broken and it will be broken until you can move after hitting end turn as long as other people have not hit end turn until that happens it is not civ 5 multiplayer it is double move 5 multiplayer and even though i'm good at double moving because of my real-time strategy background and i could probably screw players over right and left by double moving them to non-stop <laughs> that's really not what a turn-based strategy is about and it really does not involve much strategy if I want to exercise fast twitch I will find other ways of doing it against more competitive people at that skill such as when playing Call of Duty or you know maybe an older game like Unreal Tournament, Halo, whatever I mean, all those things have strategy as well but fast twitch is more emphasized as an actual element of skill in those genres so multiplayer is completely shattered from that standpoint and let me tell you a story of weekend multiplayer games with the Polycast group. In the weekend multiplayer games with Polycast, we used to play Civ 4, and we had a lot of players in Civ 4. Uh, one time we even had to split our direct IP connection games on Skype three ways 
because we had so many players we couldn't fit them into a game and still have an appreciable amount of AIs. You know, just because we were largely doing co-op against uh, mid to high level AIs depending on player skill. And it's good to know that I have an update ready to install. Anyway, uh, we used to do that, but then Civ 5 came out and we tried for a while. But basically what happens is there's really no combination of players that's workable with four people in one game. And even three is pushing our luck. <laughs> Just to give an example, this past weekend, I took some of the crowd back to Civ 4 because it's a superior game. And a group of uh, two or three people tried to play a game. And we played our Civ 4 game start to finish. Um, you know, we actually have a competent turn timer in Civ 4 and hotkeys and cues work at least a little bit better. So we finished the entire game and they had to quit before they were even one third of the way into the game because they, uh, you know, somebody dropped out of the game and couldn't rejoin. And that's pretty much the story of the multiplayer experience, uh, week in, week out, as far as I can tell, for Civilization V. Uh, I'm a little depressed. I would like to see <laughs> our playing group realize the writing on the wall here and avoid <laughs> avoid Civ V until at least you can play a game start to finish. And just the turn times are so long, and it doesn't help that you have to wait forever in between turns as well. And the, the, but the biggest thing that ruins multiplayer, like I said, is that you can't move after hitting end turn, which puts a tremendous incentive to never end your turn until other people have ended turns. But if everybody has that incentive, well, you can just picture how it goes. And for the fastest player in the group, which is me, um, that's just beyond asinine. So it's it gets to the point of intolerable. Hey, bug fixes. Well, let's look at our bug fixes. Clear of cases where diplomacy or diplomatic status could show as friendly even when the AI has denounced the player, such as AI is being friendly with someone with which they are at war. Yeah, that's a good bug fix. It's not a bad start. Uh, AI demeanor and verbiage didn't match friendliness level. That's fine. Not really critical, but it's useful to have additional bug fixes and tweaks. I mean, come on, that's something you would put in a college paper when you run out of things to say, but you just want to make, make it seem more important. If they're going to have a list of bug fixes with three bug fixes when there's still plenty of bugs in the game, tell us what you're fixing. Otherwise, I'm not buying it. Balance changes. There are actually some decent balance changes here. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the problems with this game operate at the fundamental level, but they are doing the best with what they can in this regard, in my opinion. Anyway, cities must now have three or more tiles in between them, unless separated by a sea or coast tile. This has good and bad to it. Uh, it tends to give the eye gobs of happiness beyond what they even had before, because they adjusted balance changes without <coughs> adjusting difficulty level bonuses. Another common for Axis theme, actually. The only time difficulty has ever been tweaked as a result of game rules changes was with the inception of Beyond the Sword, as far as I'm aware. Maybe they did it once in Civ 3 or something as well, but... Anytime you have major balance changes, it's time to look at AI bonuses again. In this case, AI happiness bonuses are just a little bit silly, especially when you reworked the Golden Age rules. Or maybe they reworked the Golden Age rules for that purpose, I do not know. I don't think that's a significant enough difference, however. Anyway, um, otherwise, it does help to an extent against ICS. I think it's kind of a brute force solution. I would like to see uh, research and such tied to something other than straight population. I think it would be very difficult unless you make cities grow at a neutral or increasing rate to get the uh, to disincentivize ICS sufficiently. Like, I don't think brute force solutions like making happiness penalties harder and forcing cities to be spaced more far apart, which cut into your strategy options, are the right approach. I'd rather see something along the lines of uh, having pop growth or technology work differently. Anyway, trade routes get bonus gold based on population of capital. Formula change a bit, so minimal gold received for hooking up very small cities. More ICS nerfing. Um... But I don't have a problem with that in particular. <laughs> I heard I overheard a lot of struggling with gold in this patch, and it might be related to that, especially for players who quote unquote build too many roads. Although in multiplayer, building roads is important, so it's a major problematic trade off. Bonus production from excess food tapers off if excess is three or more. I think that's just to nerf the maritime cities, and maritime probably needed that. 
Now, allied maritime city states provide three free return to the capital, not four. Same thing. But again, you know, just a slight nerf to what was probably still far and away the best city state. And I like that because you have random outcomes in terms of city states that spawn near you. And I'd like to see. Yeah, I like to see that even that a little bit that you can use. Uh, that, that even though they offer different benefits and they can be applied in different ways, that all the city-states are at least comparably usable. And s anything that nerfs the strongest one or buffs the weaker ones, probably a step in the right direction for game balance. So I, and, you know, I, I give this a decent grade here. I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, buildings. Aqueducts um, added an entirely new building. It's essentially replacing the granary from Civ 4. 40% uh, of food is carried over after a new citizen is born. Um, I like it because it helps you grow cities larger, adds to the vertical aspect. Palace boosted the three gold and three production. Granary gives one bonus food for wheat, banana, and deer. Cost reduced, so granaries are once again becoming even more important. Um, I don't know about Civ 4 levels, but they're up there. Market and Bazaar provide two gold as well as 25%, so we're going to bankroll... Uh, more stuff with our markets and bazaars. Oh, and one more thing about game rules is balance on production and maintenance costs throughout the game. And again, um, you know, maybe have a sub table or tell us what those are. This is again a little on the unprofessional side to not tell us what you're doing. Like, why? Why would you do that? Uh, other companies don't do that when they make balance changes. Like, oh, we changed the balance, but we're not telling you. <laughs> well, whatever. Um, anyway, hopefully those are in the right direction, but I can't comment on them because I'm not going to nitpick through the game and find each individual little one to see what was changed and how it has changed our strategies around it. Uh, workshop provides two production, cost increased. Um, that's not too bad. They also moved the ironworks up a bit, and you'll notice a strong bias towards extra production in Civ 5, which was very much needed. Yeah, here we go. Ironworks dropped eight production, but earlier in the tech tree. So you can set up Ironworks more easily. Um, stable can give bonus production and it's cost reduced. Uh, Lighthouse gives one bonus for food, cost reduced. So we're having a lot more infrastructure become viable, especially earlier in the game. It's something we like to see because you had strong incentive towards units, units, units in all Civ games, not just Civ 5, but in particular in Civ 5. And uh, a lot of reduced costs here and uh, you reduced co um, Coliseum happiness but also reduced its maintenance, uh, reduced theater happiness. So we're getting uh, reduced maintenance and reduced happiness on the infrastructure. This is all stuff that um, is intended, I mean, if you read between the lines anyway, is intended to sort of nerf the ICS approach to an extent because you have to build more buildings, but you are paying less on them. Yeah, I like it. It's um, it's just, They're going in the right direction with this. Uh, all these changes are great, but it's kind of like um, patching a leak in the roof when you have a freaking hole, like an entire wall of your house missing, uh, just because of how slowly the game runs. If you don't have a machine that's like double the recommended specs, you can't even play all the game settings, and they're worrying about this stuff. I don't know that that bothers me. Specialist adjustments, um, pretty much reworking some of the specialists to be available earlier and less conditionally. For example, the all-important scientists can now have plus one from the university and from the public school. You don't rely on mountainsides for laboratories any longer, so you don't have that kind of spawn problem. But really you want scientists in this game anyway, so mostly look at the scientist stuff and you'll notice that you have a slight improvement there. Improvements in routes. Production bonus from railroads reduced to 25%. That's interesting, because most things are biasing towards production. I'm not sure why. I guess they wanted to maybe discourage railroad spam. I'm not sure on that one. Removed one extra gold from mine on gems, gold, silver, marble. Actually, gold has been nerfed a bit in this patch, so look out for that. Fishing boats give food, not gold, which makes a lot more sense than them giving gold. Um, they've won gold with compass, so you can get that gold back anyway, but at least the... Uh, process of improving the resource, giving you food, is sensible. Camps on deer give production instead of food, fine. And we need more production, desperately. We have one extra food from sugar. Trading post, gold reduced to two from one. What? 
Reduced from two to one. Okay. So trading posts are no longer a strong major hit to gold here. Major hit. I was just reading that wrongly. Yeah, trading posts are nowhere near the effectiveness as they were before. And I wonder if they're effectiveness now. Actually, these merchants are worth keeping an eye on just so you can pay the bills. So that's something to mind. You might want to grow your cities big time for the trade routes now. Uh, lumber mill production increases Y1 with scientific theory moved up from steam power. So, and that's in tandem with uh, lumber mills being available sooner, I believe, uh, with construction. And mining quality production increases by one with chemistry. So you have a lot of stuff that helps you with your production now. Academy increased to six science, landmark increased to six culture. So you're also given a little bit more incentive to build an improvement as opposed to bulbing. I don't know, it's hard to overtake bulbing, even with six science. I don't think that's going to be competitive very often. Unless you get one very early, possibly. But they also made technologies cost more throughout the game. Uh, close to double for modern. So it's going to be harder to tech through the tech tree. And I think what this is going to happen is you're going to get like a renaissance or early industrial breakpoint where you can just fight parity wars for a long time and overwhelm people with strategy and tactics against AI anyway. I think that's what's going to happen. Unless the research agreement abuse just stays. Because that's the number one source of technology right now is research agreement abuse in Civilization V. Oh, yeah, here we go. Move lumber mills up to construction. Village building back to engineering. Not really a big deal. But lumber mills up to construction are important. As you're looking at a lot more production available now, potentially. And ironworks to machinery. So now, uh, again, the smaller empires, if they're well-planned, unfortunately AI never does that, but if they're well-planned, you can uh, get out a significant amount of production early in the game. So there's a lot of options that you can take here if you're willing to withstand the turn times and general lack of, or, or general fighting against the interface as opposed to fighting against the AI. Um, workboat cost increased, whatever, settler cost increased, sure, more ICS nerfing. I think they're just going to keep brute force nerfing it until it finds some semblance of balance, I suppose. Although the problem with these brute force solutions is that it's very difficult to find a fine balance between making the game unplayable versus not unplayable at the higher levels. Because really all these are amounting to are, you know, this will hurt the human more than the AI because the AI gets crazy bonuses on high levels and it can still spam cities. And the humans get to work around it. Which is fine, you know, it's, it's good to have some challenge in the game. But I'd just like to see... I'd like to see game changes that lead you to a direction other than following a cookie-cutter approach game in, game out. You know, why are we always settling on luxury resources? Well, not on, but on or near luxury resources. Trading them to the AI for gold. Using that gold to make research agreements. Spam, spam, spam. And, uh, you know, maybe picking up some maritime city-states... And otherwise, you know, just trying to stay up on the research agreement game until you have enough production set up to kill people militarily, or maybe you're going for culture or whatever it is, you're still going for those luxury resources and selling to the AI for gold and to get the research agreements. I don't know. It just doesn't seem... It doesn't seem like you play very differently from game to game because of that. Class is no longer obsolete. Probably a good change. I think Rotten Apple requires a 25% discount for the costs to um, gain plots empire-wide. Eh. I'm not sure these things are really tested to this extent where it merits they are being buffed or nerfed. Um, Chokinu's got nerfed. Double culture for um, kills for Aztecs. Much needed. The uh, French UA completely outclassed the um, Aztecs completely. Russia's got nerfed a little bit there. Papermaker got nerfed a little bit there. Well, actually, no, because it doesn't require any building maintenance, but it only provides two gold. So it's still pretty good. And map generation oil quantity per resource, mineral uranium 2. Cut deer appearance in Arctic regions. Why, I don't know. Adjust the sheep placement so it's more spread out. Decrease wheat appearance in plains and increase cow appearance overall. So if you were having fun with the cows mooing before, you get to have even more fun now. It'll smack of Minecraft. So overall, my impressions of this patch is that they are doing a the they're doing a horrible job with prioritizing what really needs to be changed in this game for it to be a good game. 
but for the things they're focusing on, they're doing decently. So I can't give it a good grade because they're not working on what matters. But the things they're changing are steps in the right direction. The AI has been improved a little bit. The game balance has been improved a little bit. So you're getting you're getting some stuff that makes the game more playable if it works in the first place. You know, if multiplayer ever becomes workable, if um you know, if you don't have to wait longer in between turns than you spend playing the turns, for example, then this might be a game worth checking out now. And so that's pretty much all I'm going to say about the patch. I liked some of the uh, ideas that came into the patch, but they just won't, they refuse, vehemently refuse, apparently, since it's been uh, half a year since release, to actually change anything important in the game, and instead are releasing downloadable content. So uh, as, far as, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, that is a travesty, and... I just can't stomach the idea of playing this game when I can't even play like a couple hours with friends and actually complete a game or even decide a winner in that time period because the thing is just so broken. You, know, you might not even be able to complete the game. <sighs> so that's a big problem for me. Um, hold on a minute, I'll pull up a channel. I will, I will forward you guys to. <laughs> I'd rather you not unsub me, but I mean, I'm not going to post games that I don't like in Let's Plays, uh, just because, like, when you don't like a game that you're playing, it's so hard to do good commentary on it, and it's not fun, and one of the reasons I'm doing these Let's Plays is I enjoy doing them, you know, so I don't want to be stuck playing a game that I just don't like playing, that isn't a good game, it's not balanced, it's, you know, you can't even finish it most of the time if you're trying to play multiplayer. So you know, why would I why would I do that to myself and why would I do that to my viewer base? But um, fortunately, there are some Civ Five Let's Players out there. I believe I've mentioned his channel in the past, but let me pull it up for you guys. Just a moment. And here we go. Um, you can see it here if you're watching this in 720p. You can probably um, see the link up here. But some of you are saying that you cannot. So the uh, user is spelled B I B O R K I R A L Y. Um, you can search him on YouTube, and he is doing Let's Plays of Civ 5, and as you can see, he is doing them on a pretty regular basis. So, if you're interested in Civilization 5 gameplay, I will, I will point you here. Um, like I said, I'd rather you not unsub me, but I'm not going to hide good material for a game from somebody who actually enjoys playing it. <laughs> Dude, you're a brave soul. <laughs> You may be a better man than me for tolerating this kind of thing, but for whatever reason, um, if you find this enjoyable, then uh, there's a perfectly good channel that is dedicated to Civ 5, and I would like to take my own channel and, and you know, and not to get away from Civ 4 necessarily, or from Civ in general, but in multiple directions. Um, just a moment. Back to my channel. You'll notice that I have a couple games, I need to update this. I want to do Toe Jam and Earl. I have two people who are now confirmed as willing to do it, so I just need to get the logistics set, and I will be doing a couple co-commentaries, that plus a bonus episode of that, well, many episodes, a bonus run of that, which will have nobody, but will be played in a very special way. So I'll, I'll probably be doing three full runs of Toe Jam and Earl. Fortunately, they're not very long games, so that should be pretty tolerable. Um, Heroes 3 will continue until I've beat it, I've pre-recorded a lot, uh, actually like a campaign ahead of what you guys saw, I believe I just wrapped up the Armageddon's Blade campaign in my, uh, in like the uh, ep most recent episode, but I uh, continue on with the next campaign and the next part, and that campaign's actually done, and I'm on the one after that, and struggling a little bit, <laughs> but I won't give up, I will find a way to beat it. You guys will probably be face palming and wall banging when you get to those episodes, but it's going to be fun. If you like watching me and team failures, you are going to get some. Because <laughs> I'm not going to avoid uploading an episode just because I don't do well in it or something. You know, that's not the kind of thing I do here. So hopefully you enjoy that. But anyway, yeah, I'm continuing on with Heroes 3 until all campaigns are beaten. I will be doing Heroes 5 but only after I'm done with Heroes 3. Uh, we'll be doing Toe Jam and Earl, 
And uh, yeah, I got another game that's already recorded, so I'll probably start airing that in the near future as well. And yeah, well, the first episodes of that with my first impressions. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that. I've already learned a lot about it since then. But I wanted to really upload my first attempt at a game because, you know, it's just fun that way. Watching somebody flounder around. But uh, yeah, I'll come back with an updated episode later and show you how it's done, so to speak, once I learn to play LTP. Anyway, yeah, that's this is just uh, the response video showing you guys what my plans are, what my thoughts are on Civ Five. And, uh, you know, a little bit what I'm going to be doing in the future. As well as just to let you guys know that I do uh, keep a track of all of your comments. I don't always answer all of them because there's actually a decent amount now as opposed to earlier in my channels. And But, you know, if there's a question that I feel is appropriate to answer, I still I do what I can. I try to be as active on my channel as possible and will do that in the future as well. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm keeping your concerns in mind, but unfortunately I just can't uh, respond to every ultimatum or I'd be locked into playing hours into a game that I probably wouldn't enjoy. And as a result, a lot of my other viewers probably wouldn't enjoy it either. So, anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this update video or at least tolerated it. <laughs> Hopefully I don't make them too much of a habit. I don't know. But I guess you can just skip them if you don't care, so it's all good. It's all good. I'm not going to upload it in lieu of other videos. So, <laughs> I guess if you don't like the announcement videos, just skip them. But if you're curious, then I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next Let's Play. Me and Team signing off.